Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining us today. My name is Kyle Eason with Inception Integrated Marketing, and I'm here with uh, episode number eight's guest, Paul Verreeder. Paul is a presentation coach, trainer, uh, speaker, and owner of ReflectiveSpark.com. I first met Paul a couple of years ago at uh, Denver Startup Week mm -hmm. and just immediately struck up a friendship with Paul. And when we started talking about creating some kind of show, didn't know what it was at the time, but you were one of the first people that I talked to, and so I'm great. really glad to have you here today. It's great to be here. We'll let uh, Paul tell us a little bit about himself and what brought him here today at the kick. Well, I think, Kyla, one of the things that I've actually loved to do throughout my career is work with entrepreneurs and companies and help them find that special thing that makes them unique. Um, that's why the company is called Reflective Spark, is, is I come in and and really work with you and figure out who you are, and then we figure out one way or two ways that we can actually help your business grow. Whether a lot of times I work in the funding world and with startups that are looking for money and, and are, are raising capital for their uh, startup groups. And that's really what I enjoy doing is figuring out what that specific thing is that, that makes them unique, and then we capitalize that and make it more, uh, you know, make it more uh, just whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we really do is we just capitalize on it and, and transform that language mm -hmm. around what makes them unique into something that's really special for them and people can really get a sense of what those companies are like. I know with Reflective Spark, uh, you have a lot of really specific, very pragmatic tips that you give to folks in terms of uh, sharpening their presentation, yeah. getting to know their audience. Uh, making sure that you have done all the preparation you can yeah. do in order to make it good. So it's, there's not a certain kind of uh, magic necessarily to making a good presentation. It does take a little bit of work and preparation. Right. 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 And, and one of the things that we all get stuck in our heads with is this presentation or an investor pitch group standing up in front of an investor group. You have to be perfect. Mm -hmm. And what I've really seen and what uh, I think a lot of the industry is seeing is that the more you're you and unique and authentic, uh, the more the, uh, the audience really does, uh, you know, kind of become a really intrigued with who you are. And so what a lot of times when I coach folks, it, it's, it's really about just finding who they are and letting that shine through versus all these things that we have in our head about we have to be perfect. What do I do with my hands? You know, I, I'm, mum, I'm mumbling all of those things. We just relax a little bit. We figure out what types of, of things really connect with the audience. And you have to know who that audience really is. Mm -hmm. And the more you, you really focus on what that group or what those people want from you, the better it actually is uh, for them as a presentation and more connection you have with the audience. Mm -hmm. That's an interesting point you bring up about authenticity. And I think one of the things that's glossed over a lot of times with that term is um, the vulnerability that can go along with yeah. that too. And that's what really makes people appreciate you, I think, and yeah. uh, endears you to others is that, yeah, you're not perfect. Right. And so being yourself and letting that shine through seems to be uh, one of the things that you're able yeah. to kind of elicit from your audience. I think sometimes when I've seen you speak, I, I think you're able to sort of bring that out of folks or at least... Uh, make people aware that hey, they, that can shine through, and that's a that's a plus. That's a strength. Yeah, well, and, and it's it's really interesting to see um, what happens when you get rid of all those things that we think are a professional speaker, and really become just a normal person, and you embrace you know the audience a little bit more. You you step out of uh, of that weird kind of feeling that you have, and so it, it makes a big difference. Uh, when you actually throw out all that stuff and you become more real. Mm -hmm. We have a smell factor, I call it the, you know, this icky factor. It's this, oh my goodness, I can't stand this person because they're putting on an act. <laughs> and as soon as they do that, especially in front of an audience, uh -huh. they lose all credibility yeah. with this because uh -huh. that's not the world we live in anymore. Mm -hmm. you, know, mm -hmm. you hear the term professional speaker mm -hmm. and it's, it's one of those things that just makes you kind of smarmy feeling, kind of mm -hmm. this weirdness that mm -hmm. you go, I, I don't like that anymore. Mm -hmm. And so the more we're more real, the more we feel like um, you could sit down and have a conversation with somebody is really the best way to connect with an audience these mm -hmm. days. Mm -hmm. yeah. well, uh, the, the show is called The Kick and it's really about uh, uh, special ideas or visionary ideas that help to 
uh, awaken and inspire others, maybe take them up a level in terms of their awareness. Uh, and what would you say is that uh, kick for you? What is your kick? For me, as we talked about this a little earlier too, and it's just, for me, I love to see somebody come out of this shell and what really makes them unique. You know, from my training in the agency world and creative world is we always try to find what are those differentiators? What are those uniqueness, uniquenesses to, to each company and to each individual? Um, every team I've ever led and every team I've been involved with has a bunch of unique people involved with it. And the more I re they realize that, that that uniqueness is something to embrace and to capitalize on to, that's the part that, that actually something magical happens there. I had a team which, which not, they were ineffectually called the, the Lone Rangers at one point. Mm -hmm. And it was all of those folks on this team that, that nobody of the other groups wanted to have. Mm -hmm. And I wanted the Lone Rangers because I wanted to see what I could do with that team and to, uh, and to really find out what made them unique and capitalize on those things. Mm -hmm. And so a year later after I, you know, was inherited this Lone Ranger team, we were dynamic because we all learned how to work together. Mm -hmm. And that's for me what the, the kick part is, is learning how you think. And, and it really kind of ties into to the book I'm writing, it, which is, mm -hmm. which is mm -hmm. coming up here in July. So. Mm -hmm. I want to hear about that, yeah. but I wanted to step back just a bit as you alluded to your experience as a creative director. Sure. And we hadn't really talked about uh, much about your background. What, what is it about your background that sort of led you here today? Well, it's, a, it's a really interesting. It, um, spending so much time in the agency world and creative world, I always thought like a marketer. And so um, when I design creative uh, artwork and, and ads and those types of things, I always thought, well, who's going to buy it? Mm -hmm. um, and then I just transitioned that into what does an art director do then? How do we lead a team? How do we create specific, interesting um, advertisements for whether that's in any of the the uh, different types of uh, industries I worked with, it, you try to find something that's unique mm -hmm. and how you differentiate that. Mm -hmm. So that's really what I end up doing as a creative director is, is we figured out you know, what's dynamic enough to, to be sold. Mm -hmm. And so I spent a lot of time in the agency world, a lot of time as a designer, and we transition that into now. I do a lot of that now with, with investor pitch deck slides as well as presentation slides. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's pretty much the same thing I was doing back then. It's mm -hmm. just we call it differently now. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. And you mentioned a book that you're working on or have finished. And um, you know we always like to talk about what's next for our guests. Sure. So what do you have coming up and how are you communicating that, getting that out to your audience? Well, right now I'm in, I'm in the final process of writing a book on creativity. Mm -hmm. And what I realized, and this came through different conversations with a lot of folks, is I would say, well, do this, 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 and this. And they go, well, that's really hard to do. And I said, no, it's not, it's easy. It's a creative technique we use every day in a, in a creative design world. And not everybody knows those in the business world. And so that's what the book is all about. Strategies to, to help you revolutionize your thinking and creative techniques and exercises that you use with your team that transform how your teams think and how you actually come to that innovation cycle of we've got to be more creative. We've got to come up with better ideas faster. And that's what uh, Unleash uh, creative, creativitybook.com is all about. Mm -hmm. so. mm -hmm. I think it's appropriate given uh, what Reflective Spark is all about and your kick sort of unleashing that authentic self, mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah, it really is. And it's, mm -hmm. it's techniques that I've learned and uh, based on a lot of brain science that I've really studied this last year, it's absolutely amazing. It's these things that, like an example, I have uh, these large roll of, rolls of paper in my office and I'll take those to a client every once in a while and we'll draw a timeline or a pitch presentation on these large rolls of paper. Mm -hmm. And we stand while we do that and that something magical happens when we're standing and we're drawing with our hands that we've forgotten about when we're, all we're doing now is, is input with our keys. Mm -hmm. And so it makes a big difference in what happens at the end of that presentation mm -hmm. or at the end of that, that exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, it really is interesting. So yeah. It's a lot more fun too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's sort of a physical component to it. it. Is. Mm -hmm. it is. So how are you getting the word out about uh, your new book and what you're up to, what Reflective Spark is all sure. about. Tell us about your websites and that sort of thing. Sure. Well, you can find about when I speak here in town, I actually just submitted two more sessions for Denver Startup Week coming up here mm -hmm. this fall. 
Uh, one is on creativity and the other, of course, is on pitch decks again. Uh, but I speak and teach around the country on creativity and presentations as a professional speaker, so I'll speak at conferences. Uh, so you can always find stuff where I'm going to speak next and where I'm going to be um, on the website at reflectivespark.com. So. Fantastic. Well, I mean, that was fan just textbook show of the kick. Appreciate it. <laughs> well done. Thanks for joining us again, folks. And uh, again, I'm Kyle Leeson, Paul the Reader for the kick. Have a good day.